In this video, I'll explain what blood pressure is, when it's high, when it's low, when it's normal. And at the end, I'll explain why having high blood pressure can do so much damage to your body. Some of the figures I give for high blood pressure may differ to other countries. And the reason for that is that it's based on the guidelines for UK doctors. The concepts we talk about with regards to blood pressure will be universal no matter where you live. Within our body, we have a network of blood vessels that are connected to our heart. Uh, your arteries, your veins return the blood back to the heart. This network has got blood inside it. Your blood transports nutrients, oxygen all around the body, and it just keeps you alive. So what is blood pressure? Well, the best way I can explain blood pressure is through an analogy. You've got yourself a boiler, you've got the pipework going around, you've got radiators, and it's the same with your blood pressure. The system it works in is your cardiovascular system, so the system of your heart. Your heart is the boiler and the blood vessels are the pipework all the way around and the radiators. What happens with blood pressure is, is it's the fluid inside the blood vessels, so it's your blood. If that blood pressure is too high, it begins to damage the blood vessels and it begins to damage the pipework. So if your boiler has got very high blood pressure, you may get leaks in the pipework or the boiler itself suddenly may pack up and not work. And there's two important figures to explain when it comes to a blood pressure reading. There's your systolic reading and then there's your diastolic reading. The systolic reading essentially is when your heart, because your heart is a muscle, is pumping at its most powerful, that's your systolic reading. It always will be higher than your diastolic reading. And the diastolic reading is when that heart muscle is relaxing, so the heart is filling up with blood and what is that more relaxed blood pressure? You will often see the diastolic reading being slightly lower than the systolic reading. Both of these are super important because even if one of them is raised, for the category it's in, you'll have high blood pressure. I've just taken my blood pressure just to show you what it looks like on a machine. So what you've got here is your systolic, which is the top reading, and then your diastolic, which is the bottom reading. Some machines will also have the pulse, which is right at the bottom. Don't worry too much about that. As you can see here, the systolic is 118 and diastolic is 85, which is a little bit high. Maybe it's the cup of tea. Normally to diagnose somebody with high blood pressure, I tend to tell patients to take a reading every single day uh, for about a two week period, write it all in a diary, and then uh, I'm able to make an average and then decide whether their blood pressure is high. Normal blood pressure is anything between 90 over 60 and 120 over 80. So if you fall in that range, your blood pressure is normal. If your blood pressure is below 90 over 60, then you have low blood pressure. It doesn't pose as many health problems further down the line. However, some people who've got low blood pressure will say that they get uh, dizzy episodes or they will have fainting episodes. In the UK, high blood pressure is considered to be 140 over 90. And I know what you're thinking. That means there is this gray area that we haven't yet covered. So what happens if your blood pressure is between say uh, 120 to 140 and 80 to 90. Well, this gray area, I like to think of it as a, a great opportunity to catch people who may soon become hypertensive, soon may have high blood pressure. I often tell them that having high blood pressure is not uh, a switch that turns on and off at night. You wake up one morning and you've got high blood pressure and the night before you didn't have high blood pressure. It's a spectrum and it's, it's a gradual process. So when I see people who've got blood pressures of 135 um, over 85, I say to them, well, you're on your way to becoming hypertensive. So why not focus on lifestyle, diet, and, and those kind of factors now be before you reach that stage? Because often it's a lot simpler when you address things earlier. We also accept slightly higher readings for blood pressure for people over the age of 80. So for, for those that are over the age of 80, the, the cutoff point is 150 over 90. So if you're above that, then you've got high blood pressure. The UK classification for high blood pressure was fairly simple. I've got the CDC's classification in America, which is a little bit more complicated, but I actually think I like this more than the UK version. What they say is if you're uh, 120 over 80 or below, it's normal, which is the same as the UK. They've got a category called elevated, which is 120 to 129 over 80. Interesting. And then they classify hypertension in stages. So they say stage one of hypertension is 130 over 139, and that's over 80 to 89. So that's, that's that gray area that the UK one kind of just left as elevated. And they've got stage two high blood pressure, hypertension as 140 
over 90 and above. And that's interesting, isn't it? Because what, what they've done is essentially they've just jumped a step forward and said, right, we're gonna try and deal with this problem a little bit earlier. Human nature, the way we are programmed is until somebody tells you you've got high blood pressure, we tend not to really take action. So I often find the conversations when I am having it with patients, when I tell them your blood pressure is teetering, it's kind of going up, it's on its way to being high, but you're not cl classified as having high blood pressure. People may not always take action. Whereas if you just jump a little bit earlier and, and catch those groups of people who normally wouldn't take action and hopefully get them to take action earlier, then you are hopefully saving a lot more lives in the long run. So why is it so important to control your blood pressure and how much damage can it do to the body? Ah, that needs a good drink, a cup of tea to, to explain. Let's go back to the boiler analogy. And if the pressure inside your boiler is high and it's constantly having to work with that pressure, eventually your boiler is gonna get knackered. It's gonna do a lot of damage to it. But also, importantly, it's going to be doing some damage to the actual pipeworks, the blood vessels in your system. So it's a combination effect. Both your heart, the boiler, is under constant pressure trying to, to, to get the blood out under increased pressure. And also you're damaging the blood vessels. And what we know is that blood vessels in vital organs like your eyes and kidneys can also get damaged with high blood pressure. And over time, it's more of a cumulative thing. It's not a thing that overnight you will suddenly die of high blood pressure. It's more what it does to your body over a long period of time, years normally. And that's why it's a silent killer because sometimes patients will say to me, well, doc, I've got no symptoms of high blood pressure. Why do I need to change my lifestyle? Why do I need to take tablets? The thing is, when you get symptoms, it may actually be too late. When you have a heart attack, which is often related to, to high blood pressure, it is too late to, to reverse it. When you have a stroke, again, it's the damage has already been done. What is really important is that we catch it early on and we're able to take action early on as well, which is why it's like so important to have your own blood pressure machine at home. I sometimes see people using apps where you put your thumb or your finger on the screen and it tells you what your blood pressure is. I don't think they're very accurate and I wouldn't really recommend them. I would just go for the old school machine. The one that I've got is the Omron one. It's like the basic model. Um, I've got one that's a little bit better in the surgery for my patients. Um, it's got recordings of all the blood pressures I've done for the for the whole day, so it's quite good if I've forgotten a reading. They're not too expensive, they're about 15, 20 quid, and I think everybody should have a machine in the house. I'll leave a link in the description if anybody is interested. And I'm actually working on a video at the moment to talk you through what you can do in terms of your lifestyle to reduce your blood pressure, so keep an eye out for that, and hopefully it'll pop through somewhere to the side. In the meantime, there will be other videos related to health that you might be interested in. And if you want to be the first to see next week's video, then please hit the subscribe and the bell. Thank you very much for your time.